All right, Paul, let's talk about building your team. Yes, both internally, like building employees, mm-hmm. and also externally. Like, externally. Yeah. Internally because, and externally. And what we mean by that, internally would definitely be employees. You, your external, which I would focus on first in mm-hmm. some aspects, because your external team can consist of people like your accountant, your lawyer, or your bookkeeper. Having those people in place, they're not going to be regular employees, but what they're going to do is they're going to be able to give you the advice and the guidance that you need, especially if you're just starting out. But even as experienced, like you and I both have our external teams of people that we use, and we've been in business for quite a while now. Right. So we both still use external team members. And it's a good way to look at it that way. It's not just we're hiring somebody out to do this thing for us. Like my accountant, we've been with him for, I think, a decade now. You're not going to be changing these people around. You're going to get to know each other. They're going to know your business. They're going to get to know all the ins and outs of things. And they're really going to be able to hone in and guide you. Yeah, and I think it's important to be intentional to find good experts because I'm on my third bookkeeper. Mm Mm-hmm. And my first one wasn't all that great. I'll be nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the second one was a little bit better, but it wasn't quite what I needed. And then finally I hit a home run with the company that we're working with now. They just provide a, a excellence to my business. That I'm not worried about my transactions. I'm not worried about my books. I know everything's clean and orderly, mm-hmm. and it gives me peace of mind to be able to go out and focus my work time during the day on bringing in as much money and, and hitting home runs. So, it's especially like when we do hire external team members, it might be something that we could do ourselves. Like, in, personally, for my business, both of my businesses, I do the bookkeeping for. Mm-hmm. That's something that I do. <laughs> but if it were, you know, when it comes to my lawyer, is going to <coughs> help me through all the copywriting, uh, trademarking that they're going to help us with. That's something I could do. I could learn how to do that. But why? I'm not probably, it would take so much time and effort for me to learn everything that they can learn. And I'm still not going to do it as well as they're going to. Right. So looking at that, it's not just, there are quite a few people that look at that and they go, man, that's an expense I shouldn't, you know, I don't want to incur a thousand dollar expense. But in the long run, think about the things that you do in a lawn care business it's taken you years to master and hone your craft. Why not allow somebody that has done the same thing in a different industry to help you along as well? Yeah, they're experts and they're able to look into my business. Specifically, I have a bookkeeping company and unlike John, I don't want to be doing my own books. <laughs> John's just very peculiar and he is obsessed with numbers and it's a delight for him. So it's not for me. It stresses me out. But I have a, a really solid bookkeeping company. And then separately from that, kind of checks and balances, I have a really good uh, CPA accountant. Mm-hmm. And then in addition to that, I have a tax planner slash financial planner that can kind of look at my business and say, hey, let's invest this money into this investment. Let's pay towards this. Let's really build a long-term plan to be as prosperous as possible long-term and can help me with decisions each quarter. And of course, making sure I know exactly what the quarterly tax payments are and being able to pay those on time. So those are all very important. Mm -hmm. These are things that most young business owners and even experienced business owners, they don't think about these a lot of times. And it's so helpful and it could save you so much time and money. You can't look at it as, like I said before, if you're gonna look at it as an investment, you're hiring them for their time. They're not like a full-time employee like when they're an internal employee. So seeing as over on that branch, would you like to talk about our other teammates? Yeah. One of the teammates, kind of an administration teammate, would be what we would call a business management software, a customer relationship mm-hmm. manager. There's, there's different verbiage around it, but it's essentially a software created for business owners that's going to take care of your quoting, your invoicing, uh, your scheduling, the administration tax tasks that when I started, I was doing with a pen and a pad out of my truck, 
can actually be streamlined through software. And so I've personally, I started with Yardbooks. That was the first one I used. Mm -hmm. I know you use them. And then in 2019, I switched over to Jobber. So I have experience with those two companies and very, very happy user of Jobber now. Mm -hmm. But those are examples of a, a CRM. And I would recommend getting all of these pieces in place right out of the gate because then you can really have a strong foundation. Exactly. When you have a CRM that works for you, regardless of which one it is, when you're selecting one, pick one, just pick one. And go for it. And a lot of us as business owners, especially when we're starting out, and even guys that are in the day-to-day, every day, they're still wearing those hats of, oh, I'm still doing the estimates, I'm still doing the invoicing, I'm still doing the scheduling. What's wonderful about this is once you get the hang of it or you decide to just go ahead and skip that step and find an office person that could do that, that one office person can do the job of maybe three or four people because you have a very efficient system. And we're going to talk about systems a lot in this program, but we're just going to kind of keep it simple for right now. Having these systems makes all of your employees, all of your teammates, all of your external teams, it makes them more efficient and streamlines your business so you could focus on the things that matter instead of all the little day-to-day things that all these little squirrely nuts that get in the way and throw uh, problems in, in the works yeah and the reason you want to start out getting these pieces in place because if you wait too long then for example with the bookkeeper and, and you have shoe boxes of receipt from past years and you yeah you're, you're a mess you know you're gonna have to pay them quite a bit to get everything just current And if you build a bunch of clients and and have a a large book of business and then you get a CRM, you're onboarding potentially hundreds of customers into this new CRM. It's easier to start from scratch and just build it because there is an onboarding process no matter what CRM you use. It does take a little bit of time to learn how the software works. Um, but eventually it's, it's like riding a bike and, and you do have to invest a little time up front to, to figure out how to get your customer information in and how, how it works. But the longer you wait, many times the more painful it is. And with the accountant, if you wait too long to have a, a good CPA, you get yourself behind in owing the state or federal taxes. And then they're going to hit you with hefty penalties, mm-hmm. interest, stress from being in that situation. But if you can tackle and get, get these in place as soon as possible as you build your business and prioritize, I know it costs money to to pay a crm each month it it costs money you know i pay monthly to my bookkeeper john saves on that expense but i pay my accountant i think it's quarterly i'm on auto draft with them and same with the tax planner so just prioritizing that these expenses are so important as like investments to make sure the business is running well it it truly is an investment it's not an expense it's really an investment you get the guidance in the beginning and it's going to help everything move smoother down the line and even for like i keep bringing it up this isn't just for the beginner guys if you've been in business for a while and you still haven't gotten all your ducks in a row now's the perfect time to do it just bite the bullet get it over with and you're going to see how much easier your business is going to to move along one other thing to you know to, to just go back real quick on the crms it's always best to have that system in place and the system to onboard somebody because if you do it correctly the first time, it's going to work so much easier. Going back and retrospecting a client can be very tedious and things might not work out as well. Right. And I was just recently coaching, these are anonymous, but I was coaching two separate businesses. One guy's just starting out and the other guy's been doing business for years and has hundreds and mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds of customers. He's got a gigantic business and he just recently got a CRM and it's this past year has been very difficult because they didn't have customers cards on file and now they're getting customers cards on file and they're going through uh, the headache of this. And here's the other guy who's just brand new and his policy is every customer has to have a card on file and he, you know, has them in his CRM and it's just easy peasy, simple. And it, he's starting the right way and, and the cash flow in his business is always current because he, right. he charges the card the day he does the service. And this other fellow had tens of thousands of dollars that was owed sure. to him. You were just telling me a similar yeah. story. That should not be the case if you get things in order. And we'll talk about mm-hmm. the systems and billing and things like that later. So you 
have cash flow and, and you're not worried about that. Right. But now that we've talked about like the more unconventional team, you know, building the teammates, right? We've talked about things that you might not think about. Now, now we could just briefly talk about your direct, your in-house team, your, your employees, okay? And one of the big questions I think both of us get is when do I start paying my guys? How do I do payroll or... You can know, I just pay what, them cash? Yeah, you can pay them cash. It's fine. You just have to have a record of it. <laughs> you can go through that, but like I said, to do it legally so you don't get yourself in a bind, you could pay somebody cash. You still have to deduct the taxes, withhold, take the withholdings, you know, Social Security and Medicare, the FICA taxes. Those still need to be taken out, and then... You, as the business owner, you're the business itself, still has to pay the company share, the business owner share. A lot of guys don't understand how payroll works. Yeah, so like let's, that. let's break it down. You want to hire your first employee mm -hmm. legally, the right way, above board. What, what does that process look like? A lot of times, you know, having a payroll service is one of the simple ways to do it. And we could look at them as external teammates, right? You, it's, you could use like Gusto, QuickBooks. Those are pretty well known. You could go online, type things in, and basically just get signed up with them pretty quickly. ADP. ADP. They're does, one of the exactly. Ones. ADP is actually, I think they are one of the largest payroll companies yeah. in the nation. Fortunately for me, my accountant does do payroll services, so. Nice. I have kind of a one-stop shop. He kind of keep track of all our payroll for us and our finances for quarterly. What you have to understand is if you're going to have employees, there's certain requirements. You're going to have to have workman's comp insurance. And a lot of guys ask that. They go, how do I go about getting a workman's comp policy? Well, if you're using, a lot of times, if you're using a, either a program or a, uh, an outside vendor to help you with these things, they will guide you through that process, and it's kind of taken care of for you. If you're going to do it independently, you know, you would basically buy a, a policy from either an independent insurance agent, or you'd have, you'd have to find, like, Erie Insurance has stuff. There's, we, we could go through the gambit of insurance providers that offer workman's comp but generally you would have to go through that whole process of finding it and in the f the first like three years there's a safety record that's involved so if you're a, an unproven company and you don't have a safety record in place what they do is they just kind of lump you in to this pool so it's everybody pays a little bit higher rate for their actual policy but at the same time you're building a record now. So as long as nobody gets hurt and nobody gets, uh, you know, files a, cl a claim, then after that, that uh, probationary period, then you could get a better rate on your workman's comp. And then there's just the management of it. Mm -hmm. So generally how workman's comp insurance works is for every $100 on payroll, you would pay a certain amount. And it depends on these class codes. So they, there's like the NCCI class codes, two in particular that come to my mind, like one for mowing is uh, 0042, and that's like a general landscaper's code, mm -hmm. where those rates, let's just say it's $4.85 for every $100 in payroll. That's good if you're a landscaper, but if you're just doing maintenance, there's other codes out there. There's the code 9102 which is made just for guys that do maintenance. So if you're mowing and you could even do applications, uh, chemical applications, things like that, that rate is like $2.80. So it saves you almost $2 for every $100 in payroll. And it, it could save you almost 50% in your workman's comp. So this is another reason why having somebody help you and guide you not only could ease the pain of it, but they could save you a lot of money because if you go into it and just say, oh, I'm a landscaper and you only mow lawns, you're probably paying more than you have to for your workman's comp. Yeah, so step one, you want to hire an employee, especially if it's your first employee and you don't know all this stuff, is to probably reach out to a payroll 
a company mm -hmm. that's going to already know all this and kind of walk you through uh, understanding it. Give us the abbreviated list again of, of what's going to go into paying an employee. Yeah, right. So let's not let's, that we recommend manually doing it yourself, mm -hmm. but just so you understand if you're paying your employee $18 an hour, they don't cost $18 an hour no. from the <laughs> operational expenses. There's a lot more than that because of, of everything. Go ahead. Right. Exactly. So if a, uh, say it was $18 an hour, on top of the withdrawals that you need to take from their check, their wages, and then turn it over to Social Security and Medicare, there's also the business's contribution as well. So it adds up. And then you might also have your FUDA, your federal unemployment tax, and your SUTA, which is your, it's S-U-T-A and F-U-T-A. And what these are, these are a state and a federal unemployment tax. So you may have to, depending on where you're at, you might have to pay it at the state level and the federal level. And those are additional on top of their wages. So that $18 an hour guy ends up turning into, you know, say a $21 an hour. If you ever try to explain that to a, an employee that doesn't isn't savvy, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? It cost me 21 You know, I cost you $21. You're only paying me 18 It's like, well, all these contributions that we must make in your name, what we withhold from, well, it doesn't matter about what you withhold from them, but there are additional fees that we have to pay for an hourly employee. And again, a payroll company is going to already right. understand all of this. So, John, if somebody says, okay, I have a brand new employee and they're going to start on Monday. Do I pay them Monday afternoon or evening when we get done working for today? Do I pay them on Friday? Do I pay them the next Friday? How, yeah. how do I even know when? Do I pay him with a check? How do I deduct? Oh, man. Walk us through what, what's the best practice for paying the employee? It depends on how you are set up. Most places, you know, you're going to pay them every two weeks. We have weekly payroll. So if throughout the week, there's a one-week buffer. Mm -hmm. So the very first week, they're not getting paid. But every single week, they're getting paid for the last week they worked. So instead of it being a two-week cycle, they're getting paid on a weekly basis, but they're about a week behind. That Because otherwise, it's very difficult to calculate. In real time. In real time, like, hey, you know, it's Friday, and we got to pay, pay our, say our paydays on Friday. It's hard to go, well, he clocked out two hours early, but we have him down for eight hours. Right. So, so that's why there's... So if you're paid... And a little tip that I learned is a lot of companies here in Atlanta will actually pay on Mondays. Mm -hmm. Because what happens on Fridays, guys get paid... They got a bunch of money. They go and blow it all. Yeah. <laughs> and Monday, boss man, you think I can get a little? Right. You think you pay me? A, you know, if you pay on Monday, hopefully they budgeted their money a little bit better over the weekend. And I know that's pretty popular in, in lawn and landscaping here in Georgia. The Green Industry Podcast .com studios are not only green in the name, but there's green lighting and little switches that shut it off. So we're trying to be environmentally correct here. Yeah. The other point too is when it comes to paid dates. A lot of times we would have pay date of Tuesday. So it's not like everybody got paid on Friday. People would get paid on Tuesdays. We found out kind of in a similar vein, not really about how they're spending their money because that's none of our business. The amount of people that would call off and they would show up because, hey, we have to get our checks. So they're not calling off and things. That's, you know, a little trick of the yeah, trade. Yeah, I mean, these are, these are little things to really consider, but... Mm -hmm. I think that's really sound advice, John. For employee number one, you can reach out, you know, to a company. I, I'm going to actually, on the Green Street Podcast, one of my friends works for ADP, and we're going to get him on the program to kind of break this down. But it doesn't have, I'm not endorsing their company, but any company like that, a payroll company, they're going to be able to walk you through to really give you peace of mind that you're dotting your I's, you're crossing your T's, and you're paying your employees the right way. Mm-hmm. So as far as the rest of the team members, you know, that we're team building right now, mm -hmm. and we just kind of went down a little rabbit hole, but it's, a, it's important to know these things. Besides the, you know, direct labor, you definitely want to look, once you get to a certain size, you're going to have to have the office personnel, salespeople, marketing people. A lot of times with marketing, I feel like we, it, it could, we could have somebody that's in-house that does our social media which is nice because they're in it 
and that's they know what we're doing and everything. But then there's other times when things are slow where sometimes people just walk away. And if there's a void, you could outsource that. There's a lot of people, especially younger folks, they're so savvy with all social media and they love it. It's not like it's a chore for them. So finding those type of people that actually enjoy dealing with the social media and promoting your business for you, it's a it's a win all win win all the way around. You know, truly building a team doesn't just mean I have a labor, I have laborers working for me, and that's it. It encompasses so much more than that. You have like we we keep saying we have our internal, we have our direct hires. And then we have our outside team that helps us. So working in concert, I really feel that's how you you break through the walls, you keep moving, you grow, and you're not ripping your hair out of your head because you're wearing all the hats. That's why so many business owners, you know, think about if you're wearing like baseball hats and you got them stacked up to the ceiling. Right. And like a football analogy, essentially we're the quarterback. So we want a really good wide receiver out there. We want a really good offensive line to protect us. We want a really good running back, Dick Chubb, right? And you get 11 guys on the football field, you know, in a, in a football game, and the quarterback, you're just facilitating, passing it to the wide receiver or handing off to the running back. The offensive line, they're doing their job, but a lot of companies are wearing all the hats. The quarterback is going back to pass, and he throws it to himself, and then he runs out there. He's the wide receiver, <laughs> right. and then you know he pitches it to himself and runs, and, and that's really going to destroy you. You need to get the right people on the bus and, and build the team the right way, which does cost money. That's why mm-hmm. in the other modules we're talking about how you earn this money in your business so you can pay all of this and earn a profit. Yeah, really, when you think about employees, they don't cost you money at all. They earn you money. And especially when you have your prices set correctly and you have an understanding, employees are free. They really are because all the cost is going to your clientele. You know, it's not just one client that's paying for them. It's all of them. Teamwork makes the dream work, man. The more team members you have, a lot of times the easier it gets. Yeah, and making sure that they're the best for your company, that they're good, not just willy-nilly hiring oh you know my cousin's sister's an accountant you know you should right. hire her you know qualify them you know just because they have a cpa behind their name doesn't mean that they're the best for you like paul said he's been through three different bookkeepers because things just didn't work out and it, it's not like a it doesn't have to be any kind of like malicious reason sometimes it's as simple as like scheduling like they're not available to you when you need them and then even when we come into direct labor, you know, our, our internal team, we look at them. Just because they're a body in the field doesn't necessarily mean that they're the right choice. How many times has this happened to you? It's happened to me quite a few times where you have somebody that's in your, you have a great team working together, and then you get a poison pill. You get somebody that's very toxic that comes into your ranks. If you don't knock, if you don't, Get rid of that poison right away. It, it'll take a perfectly great employee, a great team member that you have, and it will sour them. And eventually, instead of being somebody that is helping you, they will really start to destroy you. Yeah, and that's why taking each of these components serious as you vet, I got to hire the right bookkeeper, hire the right accountant, mm-hmm. get, get a good, solid CRM hire good employees in each of these different components, not making that mistake of having the bad apple. Mm -hmm. And if you do make it, acknowledging it, owning up to it and and fixing it as fast as possible, but but really taking each of these parts serious and and building the right team internally and externally. Exactly. Then there's one thing I think I'd like to leave most people with. It's an old saying that somebody told me forever ago. It's okay to be slow to hire, but be able to be quick to fire. Slow to hire, quick to fire. If you get some poison in your body, you need to get rid of it as quick as possible. Same thing goes for your business.